Welcome to the serverless framework guide. Now, if you are someone who has ever really worked with serverless or who has been learning about how to deploy or how to use serverless, and you have really watched like many couple of tutorials about deploying the API or just working with AWS Lambda console or web console in general, you might thinking about how to really just simplify all this process and you really came up with a serverless framework, but you are really confused then how to really use it. Then this video is exactly for you. In this video, I will just really demonstrating about what exactly are the features of really like serverless. Why do we need it? And especially like how do we really make all of the sense of the YAML syntaxes that comes in built in with the serverless framework. So really just going forward, really just, I want to really just demonstrate about why do we use serverless framework. Now, if you are really who has somewhat, who has seen many tutorials on really, let's say managing or deploying the API using web console, AWS web console, then I mean, sure, you can really deploy all of the API in just like three or four minutes, like per API configuration. But imagine that scaling up to, let's say 10 APIs, thousand, let's say hundred APIs or thousand APIs itself. Now that is something like a trivial challenging task. And you don't really want to click all of the buttons like scroll next like, web pages. It's just it's a terrible user experience. And so what we really do is we really want to at least say speed up the process. What we really want to do is we want to really enhance our user experience and we want to make it like the deploy, we want to really deploy APIs much more fast enough. So for that purpose, what we really do we do is we can use an AWS Cloud Formation template. Now hold a minute. We will say this this tutorial is about serverless framework. Then why are you talking about cloud formation? The fact that serverless framework on behind in the hindsight itself generates the cloud formation template and it deploys the cloud formation template to the AWS and generate and in turn it just creates all of the services. So what cloud formation templates are. So as you can see in the screen like cloud formation template just looks something like this. So like just uh, to give an example about cloud what is cloud formation I would really like to take an example of uh, GitHub web console and Git itself. So just like we have GitHub and we can really drag and drop all the file, but still we really use like Git clone, Git push and all of that because it just really enhance the user development and developer experience as well. So in that case, what we can do is we can use this template and we can just create all of the instances. We can create VPC, we can create Lambda, we can create the Dynamo table in just no matter of time. So similarly, if you really want to deploy like let's say one API instances, or if you really want to deploy a thousand API, you can just do it within the one API script itself. But the problem with cloud formation template is that it's it's just ugly. So as you can see, you know, just for deploying, like let's say this API is for about Lambda. So to really just deploying about one Lambda instance, there's so much of, let's say, we need to define the configuration, we define it to resource, whether our API is going to be, a, whether our Lambda is going to be about the separate or we are, whether we want to really host their Lambda instance into our VPC itself. There's a lot more configuration. So how can we just simplify? So AWS serverless framework just exactly tries to solve that problem. And one thing that you really need to remember that this tutorial would not make any sense unless if you really know the, all of the theory, all of this stuff about AWS and theoretical. So what that really means that before really moving on to serverless framework, you need to know about the API gateway, at least in theoretical stuff about how it works. What is some internal mechanism? What is proxy integration? What is non-proxy integration? How, what is the internal mechanism about lambda like without that the kind it's kind of really hard to really just truly understand what this serverless framework is all about doing over here but nonetheless uh, as I will, as we will really go further we'll just kind of really demonstrate about how it really works and how it just kind of do it so what are we going to do here well we are going to do a three different tasks so let's say we are going to create a get api we are going to create a post api and also we are going to lay, let's say uh, switch the trigger we are also going to introduce the s3 trigger itself so before going on further, here's the, here's the theory and here's the summary about how Lambda actually works. So in order to really work the Lambda, you need some of the trigger itself so or event itself. So without any event, the Lambda couldn't work. So that's why it's really named as serverless. That means it's an event driven architecture. So it's like when the event really triggers to the Lambda, it just really tells it, hey, do some shit for me. And in turn, it just gets some item or do all of the things, all of the processing tasks, get an item from the database and do a bunch of all of the things itself. But before moving on directly towards the VS code itself, I would really like to take a moment and explain how the YAML really works. Because YAML is the core foundation about how all of these deployment scripts work. It's just not in serverless framework. You can see it like Prometheus, Kubernetes, and like various other deployment frameworks out there. So it's like just if you really come over here, I would really like to take a brief moment and tell you about what the YAML really works. Now for an instance, like the YAML really looks intimidating. 
but if you really practice enough let's say only just it takes about one and two hour itself max to max but if you really get acquainted with it you will really feel that yaml is way more simplified than json itself so, so to really get an example let's say i choose an example of data itself about country it's like country itself right try so and i'll get so and i'll come over here now what i'll need to do is i will get an indent so indentation is much more crucial over here so what we can do is we'll come over here and we will type out let's say i n d i a d a so what we can do is over here we can type out name of some of the states it's like so uh, and again what we can do is come over here and then what we can do is we can type out america this is like america and then what we can do is just like if you come over here let's say what was that mh right this is like mh mh okay and then what we can do is we can write let's say rj that means rajasthan and that means let's say if you come over here it's like if you come over here you can write delhi delhi it's just like dl etc so in the same way you can if you come over here it means we don't need an indentation over here so you can really write in this way so it's just it's just really gets familiar so in case we are really, we can write here n y c it's like we can write it's like cf for california and all of that but if you really want to write nested structure let's say we have earth so like how do we write nested so like we have earth we have continents continents so it's like we have then states so it's like okay yeah so now so as you can see indentation is really important over here just by pulling out right there it just the continent goes inside the earth so what we can do is we have countries c o u n c o u n t r y then within the country we have let's say states i think there's problem with indentation i think oh yeah so it's now it now it's correct so each state has its own cities so let's say s i t city and then let's say each state has its own of the various thing so you really got my point what i'm trying to say so this was our real, let's say you know straight parallel structure but how do we write arrays this is pretty much easy so let's say if we come over here so let's say what we could take an object of cars let's say what what we do want to do is we want to take a tesla object and then uh, say let's say what we can do is over here we can take an array and then what we can do is if you come over here again what you can see the array has been listed so what we can do is we can take as model x we can take it as let's say again we can do as model m o d e l model y so again you can see this will be pretty, pretty much enhanced so again if you really want to do a further let's say various models in model y what you can do is let's say it's like there's a simple model or there's a premium model in the over here so now the in it's like a premium model so there you go this was our basic introduction on yaml itself now although the yaml can be really brief enough so i would really highly encourage you to check this video from tech world by nana she has brilliantly illustrated about how the yaml really works all of the boolean value and operator but this is all you what you need to know so being said that let's get into the vs code itself oh one thing that i really forgotten is that what what are the requirements so it's like if you come over here you need to install a serverless framework so for that what you need to do is like we need to install npm i dash g serverless so one thing that you need to know is like we need to install this as a global dependency so it's like i will just give it enter until the time it just really it's going out one thing what i'll really do is you need couple of other requirements so what is let me just close this one if you really come over here you need to install an aws cli uh you might ask why do you do you really need to install the aws cli just to for configuring all of the credentials so i would really highly encourage you to just install this version 2 depending upon what kind of operating system you are using and the second step is about if you come over to the aws management console click to the im roles and then what we need to is we need to, we will need to generate the users so i will go to the user one this is really like so apparently you will see the first one is blurred due to the privacy reasons so what i'll do is i will really add a user let's say i'll do is like sir word 
less uh, framework that may be good so it's like i will give it a programmatic access we'll do it next so i will attach a policy so now this may look really intimidating for you if you are somewhat to, who are really new to beginners but what for our purpose we need to do is we will create create the administrator access so this aws administ access, administrator access will really just kind of give an access to all of the services in our aws account itself and then you might really ask about hey then what are the uses of this other let's say other permission set so aws is kind of built in a such a way that it's really favoring to large individual corporation where there are multiple teams multiple different shapes and sizes and all of that and you don't need to really provide like administrator access to each and every one of them it's like if you are if you are someone who is working in s3 team itself you will really the your employer will kind of really give you an s3 credential itself so being said that just really just configure all of that so if you come over here again we don't need to do all of that just review okay we'll create the users okay so this is something our credential what we have got so it's like this is what we have really got over here so what i'll do is i will just open my command prompt so it's like i'll click ok okay and then what i'll need to do over here i'll just come over here and i'll do is aws is configure so before doing that i will just do it aws dash v i think something error wrong happened let's say aws dash dash version okay so as you can see it's giving me a perfectly fine version i'm using the version 2 so what i need to do is i would, I would need to do is aws configure to define my configuration itself so it's like let's say uh, take this key to come over here i'll just paste it over here again i'll enter and then what i'll need to do is i'll just copy this and then again come over here and just paste it exactly right here and yeah one thing that you need to do you need to remember is that be careful about which region that you choose so naturally my region was ap south one as you can see here so that is why it has been automatically picked up so like why is it important to choose a correct region proper so let's say i'm really i have chosen a region about mumbai itself and i really want to deploy some services or some other stuff in like version itself some of the things may not really work and some of the things you might get issue although uh, aws has been really pretty good in handling all of this issue nonetheless let's get started let's so come back to here and let's say uh okay, we don't want this yeah json yeah everything is just set so right now what we have we'll come over here again we'll just exactly overdo here so it's like as you can see everything has been just done in, installed really correctly so what i need to do is i will need to create a serverless template for that let's say i will do is serverless and then create i will just enter this one okay and then let me just take this up for a while so as you can see it is giving me let's say this uh, this error message so that what you need to do is we need to create a template in order to for that let's say serverless create dash t okay okay so i think it's not giving me any help okay so i was really trying to show that that serverless framework isn't really dependent isn't really for node.js itself you can use any any language like node go python or c sharp java anything in that so it's like here here you can get let's say serverless serverless dash help okay so here so it's like serverless create help right serverless create dash help so yeah this was i what i was trying to show you that so what you need to define is like serverless create and then dash that template or dash t and then as you can see there are various options like for which do you really want to deploy your uh, serverless application so in our case we are going to stick with the node.js although you can really see that there's various other options let's say this kotlin this scala there is like say java this golang there's python there are many more others but for our case we are just going to stick with node.js so the, for that we need to kind of redo it serverless so it's like SLS, we can really shortly need denote as SLS, create dash T AWS dash Node.js. Okay. Now we need to just sit back for a while. I'll come back to you again. 
okay so now it's been really generated so one thing that we need to just come over here so as you can see here you can see some weird gibberish and although for the first brief moment it doesn't really make sense but trust me it is really easy so let's start with our service name so as you can see it just gives out the, some basic boiler code let me just close it for a while and now what we need to do is let's say if the first is our service name naturally the service name is pretty much intuitive we don't need to do anything about it and then the serverless framework version so this is for serverless we are using serverless version 2 it's like naturally the serverless framework has been gone through various evolution like version 1, version 2 and version 3 is on the edge so and now for example let's say which is our provider so serverless framework isn't really restricted to AWS it can support various, various other cloud providers let's say Google Cloud, Azure uh, let's say Tencent is our Tencent or let's say Alibaba is having their own cloud it's like and you can use the you can use this serverless framework for in that area as well so and as and you can really just kind of really do is like which is your stage which is the stage let's say do you really want to deploy it as a dev stage or do you want to really deploy it as let's say or production or any other environment so then i'll just let it comment out this is probably the really important out there so let's say i will really just comment it out so one thing that you need to remember is like let's say the region must be indent with all of these things so let's say you can see this is giving me a red line that means it's not an indentation so and you might ask hey which extensions are you really using for that i would really just highlight to highlight you you should use this extension called serverless ide so it's like this is a really good tool it gives you various options and it just screams when you really do something like indentation error or all of that which we will really see how it really works but nonetheless let's say let's see that this is our region everything the everything our provider has it a let's say the provider has a name cloud provider has api gateway the runtime that we really want to use is let's say node.js 12.x so naturally the 14 is arrived so what we'll do is we'll just change it for now say to the 14x so although it will give an error but don't really worry so i think it's, it's been gone that's better so now what we do is we'll come over here again we'll just indent it out now one thing that we need to remember that it just it needs to be indented in the really proper way so again this indentation is really like this. so really massive headache for us okay then it's just really finished so right now what we can do is let me just uncomment it for a while what is this i am role really mean now if you are really like new to serverless or really have been just doing some of the dev evolution or dev test would know that in order to really work with any of the serverless or any just any other aws service in general you need permissions you need iam roles to really just or to really deal with it if you don't have any iam role or iam permissions you would not be able to just work on that server service itself so let's say if you really want to do some crud operations with dynamodb naturally what you really want is that you really want all of the put item get item scan delete and various other attributes itself so you really want permission to do all of that sort of thing so i am roles really exactly allow you to do all of that stuff so but for our case we don't want really like we don't want to use probably like say uh, dynamodb we don't want to use s3 operations so in that case we can just ignore it for a while so since we are not really using any much of that if you now if you really come over here the environment variable now environment variable is really important so it's like you can just use it for a, let's say here now environment variable is just like the environment variable which we use in express framework it's kind of really similar but it's just really much more enhanced and intuitive over here so naturally what we can do is over here now let's come to our favorite part is about lambda function so now the lambda function is over here so what it really does is it will create this uh, this is a name of the lambda handler so it's like okay this is really got some wrong okay this is how we de denote this is how we create the lambda function we denote this lambda as a function it's an a uh, function itself and within that we need to create or uh, let's say we need to define as what is the name of our lambda function and then we will define where our hand handler of that function would be so in that case this hello function which is the name of this function function one the handler of that function is contained in handler file handler.js so let's say we'll open this handler.js 
you will use this let's say handler dot so it's like handler dot hello so it's like in this so as you can see this is the our model dot exports dot handler so and you can see this is our async function so what we can do to really deploy this so for that we need some uh, let's say this is our uh, lambda so this is our lambda what we need to do is we need to define some event some triggers for that we need to define let's say we'll just uncomment it while and comment it out so as you can see here's an error say handler dot hello just like hello so as you can see this is really giving me an error that means it's not in sync okay so now it should be really getting over here so as you can see there are two various methods one you, one is you can use rest api second one is you can use http APIs. now what are the difference between both http apis are generally like one third the price of rest apis but the support for you know, http apis are pretty minimal as compared to rest apis and not that minimal but it's quite really like uh, the aws is kind of really improving the service and the support functionality to that, to that but nonetheless let's see if you really want to create let's say a gate route right so what we can do is we'll come over here what we'll do is like get what oh, yes yeah so what we can do is we'll just create a gate route itself and then what we what we can do is we can also see that there is a web socket connection which we don't really want we can also create a, let's say a cloudwatch api or you can do some various allowed metrics you can do crazy a lot of stuff but that is just not the scope of this topic we really want to focus on the basic and tricky details about serverless so in that case what we are going to do is we will just clear this basic stuff right okay so we then we'll just come over here and then what we'll just do is we'll cut all of that stuff and for now what we'll do is just we will let's say come over here okay and then what we'll do is we'll try to deploy this see if let's see if we get some error or not it will take some time i will just uh, fast forward this process Okay, it took some lot of time. It took some time, but it's really like the like API is live. So let's try and test it out whether it, uh, whether it works or not. So if I really open this, okay, as you can see, I got some of the response back from let's say API gateway. And the best part is about is that I can get some query parameters over here. So as you can see, you can see over here that is the raw query string. That is, let's say I will get some uh, question mark s is equal to question mark s is equal to let's see what i will do is i will get some youtube youtube and uh let's say what i'll do is and facebook youtube and fp okay then it, it is as you can see it automatically generates the query parameter which is kind of really helpful when we'll just kind of if you really want to do if you are into let's say get request then this is much more helpful for you but now let's take a step back and really analyze how it really works like what is actually happening over here so to really understand over here let's come back to our serverless framework as you can see when it just got deployed over here the serverless in itself really created the cloud formation template and this is exactly how the cloud formation template actually looks like and if you come over here this is the zip file where it automatically bundles all of the code and it, and it push to and it deploys to really say our s3 bucket and in that in turn that s3 bucket and it also really generates a cloud formation template and what of the what the code will really contain in that s3 bucket would be all of the spread and all of the lambda handler it will create all of the let's say the dynamo db which will really say c over here which will just come over here and today really say instead of me trying to just kind of really give you an idea it's, it's better i will just kind of really visualize that so as you can see over here if i just come over to the s3 so here as you can see this is really like the serverless framework creates this bucket over here you can see the serverless framework which we have defined the as a user as serverless framework in im roles so as you can ever see over here if you could just click over here this is serverless again this serverless framework and this slash dev mode and then what we can see is that this is our thing gz file and then let's say json complicated let's say this is our cloud formation template compiled one and for that now we will check about where is our cloud formation template let's say this is our cloud formation one i'll open this cloud formation one and i'll just show you that serverless framework actually creates and deploy the cloud formation templates 
So if you come over here, just click this one, we'll create the stacks. And as you can see, this is our, let's say, serverless framework dev tutorial. This is our, let's say, the key. This was our dev developed and deployed. So let's say what we'll do is we'll create it over templates. Okay, this is uh, this is our template over here itself, which is kind of really exactly the same uh, which is mentioned over here. Okay, so uh, I hope that you have really got exactly how it works. It, it was just an get route. How do we create a post route? Well, the process is exactly the same. What we need to do is we'll just create, let's say, uh, what we just do it like post post.js and what we'll do is we'll just create an export so like export dot handler is equal to async yes now this async keyword is really important otherwise you will really land in some internal error issues and trust me i when i was really get just, when i was just getting started with it i really landed this issue about and thus i was just stuck in and solving this issue for hours and hours itself. so you just really be careful about what this issue is trying to solve and the next video what we'll just try to show is like how can you really debug all of this error so this will be many part series so let me know what what do you really want to see over here but nonetheless let's come back to a point let's say async event and then what we create an arrow function and then what we just do it over here so now what we need to do is we'll create a const as body so what would be the body look like we need to just kind of really the body will look like as json dot parse event event dot body so if you come over here let's say um, the body was like query string parameter since it was and get request so it was it was here as a query string parameter but instead of query string parameter in the get if you have already opted for post you will get some as body over here which will just see how it works so nonetheless let's come over here and as you can see the incoming request over here is already been let's say in the JSON format and you need to pass that JSON format in order to really just kind of uh, abstract all of the item over that. So over coming back to our point itself now what we need to do is let's say uh, again so let's say JSON dot pass and then what we need to do is like let's say we'll return then what we need to return is as let's say body this is the standard format of let's say body and then what we'll do is let's say JSON dot stringify and in bracket let's say body itself if we don't really want uh json or stringify b body and then what we can do is we can really uh, optionally uh, define some uh, something as headers so let's say what we need to do is let's say if we come over here some let's say, copy some header over here let's say status code status code is also really important so let's say if we come over here and then let's say return status code as 200 you can really also just if you really want you can add, add additional condition like 500 or 2 500 400 anything but i'll just do it as uh, 200 itself so what we need to do is now we need to define as headers and then what you need to do is let's say content type c o n t e n t dash t y p content type let's say text let's say text T E X T text slash HTML. Okay. So if, if it text slash HTML, let me just check what is the correct format of it. Like let's say something I have really forgotten content, content type of text slash HTML. Now. Hmm. Okay, we just come over here again. Uh, let's say, yeah, this is exactly what we want. Or oh, if we come over here again, yeah, this is exactly what we really want. So let's say, I'll just indent it like in this way. Oh, by the way, the content type should be in, let's say, this is choppy. So now let's say this one is really like over here. Okay, we don't want this over here again we need to put over comma and yeah so all of our typo error has gone so now what we need to do is we'll come over here we just copy exactly same condition and let's say come down over here make sure you really line up all the indentations so as you can see this indentation is really matching and as you can see 
is giving me an error so that this and this uh, are the function name are exactly same so what i'll do is i'll just change it up what i'll do is i'll just hit say post route okay and then what i'll do is i'll just come over here what i'll do is just post dot handler we haven't really named our handler any name so this is bare minimum over here so let's say post dot handler post dot handler okay and then what you need to do is we'll just come over here post so let's say slash post method is also post okay and then what we need to do is like let's see and finally let's try to deploy it so let's deploy okay so till then let me just open the postman okay so as you can see we have got our let's say the post API out what i'll do is let's say i'll just copy this i will come over here i'll just take the request as a post request i'll enter the url over here come over to the body take the raw data and then what we'll do is say, let's say we'll take the data as let's say text 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 as uh, let's say hi okay uh, let's say hi let's try to send this okay so what we have to do is we have got the response let's say this is this was in one second it's really long let's try to send it out there right? so as you can see the cold start is just we you know we are getting this response in less than uh, 250 milliseconds that because it was in us east region but what if we really want to do in, the, in mumbai itself we can really further down we can really further reduce the time itself but that's really a topic about let's say a next video something like that but as you can see we have got a successfully got our api request itself if we really want we can choose let's say uh india itself let's say then what we'll do is let's say text is india as you can see we have pretty much got our api response so and this was our like this, this was our just basic post route itself but what if we really want to instead of change the trigger itself now in this case what our trigger is our trigger to the lambda is api gateway but what if we really want to change the trigger itself we can really change that for that we really want to create some let's say if in that case if we really want to create a trigger itself about let's say we want to trigger create a trigger about s3 itself in that case what i'll do is if i'll come over here i will just type out let's say s3 let's say i'll just a serverless framework i'll come over to this one serverless framework guide uh what i'll do is again i will just come over here then i will choose some docs say let's I'll choose some aws uh, okay let's say aws event what we need to do is we'll create an s3 event itself so what we need to do is again this s3 event is like this this is actually the name of the bucket itself so what we'll do is we will create a bucket for you so it's like in that case either there's two options either you can choose this one or this format or other you can choose this one both are absolutely correct but if you really want to define an event like which event do you want to trigger let's say in a bucket itself you, it, you can get multiple events itself you can get a put event you can get delete event you can get a modify event you can get anything but at what event of s3 bucket do you want to trigger lambda function when we really want to create an object case do you really want to trigger uh, our lambda or do you want to trigger lambda when the objects are being deleted in that bucket itself so you can do various other steps let's say you can create an s3 delete object you can create let's say you can also define a suffix you can just you can have that granular control over here and that is pretty much really good in that case for our let's say s3 create object we can define as let's say delete object modify object anything in that anything in that way everything is just mentioned in the documentation please i would highly encourage you to check this out it's just it's just good enough for our case we'll just what i'll do is we'll just resize it enough come over down over here and what i'll do is i'll just come back over here so it's like again I'll, what i'll do is okay i'll take care of indentation make sure the resize is just under the post one so what i'll do is uh, let's say i'll take the unique name the every every name of the bucket in the aws should be unique so what i'll do is like i'll do is a a a w s so just because it remains on the top let's say aws sls bucket b u c k e t okay in that case now you might say giving me an error because according to this extension it's not in the right format but nonetheless 
let's come over to the here and let's say type out bucket say if we come over here say s3 s3 okay so now this is exactly the power of extensions it, should, it just makes our life much more easy so what we really want is over here it's just like yeah so what we need to do is we'll create let's say uh, s3 data s3 s3 dot js okay what we'll do is let's say we'll create a new file called s3 dot js again let's say if you come over here let's say, let's say post we'll copy everything over here except for this one what we'll do is instead of we don't want to re re like we don't want to in return we really want to console log so what we'll do is let's say what we'll do is we'll or uh, let's console dot body itself right console dot log in that case it's like we didn't want our body itself okay in that case let's say s3 body in that it's really distinct fight for s3 body and then this one is also s3 body okay uh let's try to deploy it so what we'll do, essentially do is whenever we'll upload any item to our s3 bucket it will just console log all of the event in the cloud watch itself so we'll just see how it really looks like so let me just first try to deploy this one sls deploy one thing that you need to mention one thing that you need to make sure is that your uni your bucket name should be unique otherwise it will give you it will generate an error when it will just kind of deploy it okay so as you can see we got a resize handler although our function doesn't do any resizing work but just we have copied from serverless framework doc so it's fine for us so if you really come over here again if you just kind of really come back to our s3 console and as you can see we have created our own sls bucket itself if you really come over here so again what we'll do is like we'll just try to upload something over here let me just take anything over here i think i will just upload any relation file in svg that will do a pretty much work for us relation.svg we'll just try to upload it okay so now what we'll do is we will just come over here and again we'll check some uh, cloud watch if we really come over here to let's see if it really works or not okay so i'll what we'll do is we'll go in the log groups okay this is our function so let's say okay this was our let's say log and this let's say uh, this is a something like unexpected token error okay so instead of let's say there's something in error instead of trying to json stringify let's say so what we'll do is let me just close this by mistake has been open so what we'll do is we'll come over here again in the post so let's say is equal to event event and then what we'll do is we'll just load it for a while okay okay so let's try to let's say let's try to redeploy it again to see if it works or not okay i will just come over here again and then what i'll really try to do is i'll just delete it for a while uh copy and paste over here it's like paste okay so it's been deleted successfully let me just come over back again here okay i will just anything and what i'll do is I'll just drag and drag and drop over here and then try to upload this. So again, let me just come over to our let's say resize stocks. As you can see, if you come over here, okay, as you can see, the event was successful over here. So what we can do is if we really want to derive the name over here, so what we'll need to do is like event dot records. This is like if you come over here again, what we'll do is like event dot r e c o r d s records so like let me just correct for syntax uh yeah the r is capital so let's say this will be our zero so in this case again let's try to sls deploy okay so yeah it's been really deployed so let's now let's try to recheck it again uh the console instead of trying to delete it again and what i'll do is i'll just upload any new one so what i'll do is i'll upload this dynamo paper over here think it just got hanged I think so instead of using drag and drop what i'll do is i'll just uh add a file over here let's 
So here again, let's see what I'll do is this document. Then I'll try to upload this. Okay, and then upload over here. So again, come over to the CloudWatch. Click over here, and then click over this. So as you can see, this is our bucket name. It's giving perfectly. Uh, it's giving me an object name. Uh, this is our document.svg and it's just pretty much working exactly fine. So there you go. This was our basic introduction to serverless framework. Although this is just not enough. This is just plethora more of what we can do with serverless framework. But I really want your suggestion and feedback in the comment box section. What you really want to see in the next future videos of serverless in general. Till then, make sure you just leave down in the comment box below what your suggestions are. Stay subscribed to this channel. It is more important if you have really liked this content. Till then, I see you next time.